This important thing here, largest rocket uh, ever built, most powerful. Sorry. It's about the height of the London Eye, that tower. Let's listen in. We have lift off. Well, they'll be pleased with that so Vehicle far. Pitching down range. Looks like a pretty flawless launch. And, and it looks it's... incredible. It's an incredible looking thing, isn't it, Tom? It is, uh, as I was saying, just as the <laughs> the, 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 the final cat right, interrupted me there. The, the most flight, powerful the, and the largest the rocket are still ever built. Building here in the this is SpaceX's big team of increased their ability to deploy more satellites into right orbit. Now. That's their business model. But they're Coming also on the contract from NASA be because this Starship, the, the craft on top of the heavy booster, that big rocket blasting into space, Starship is currently contracted to take astronauts down onto the surface of the moon in 2026 as part of NASA's Artemis mission. Um, so there's right, a lot riding on these tests. Interestingly, one of those so engines isn't working, on, which is something I'll be interested in. Minutes, you can see there's a little seconds, missing so yes, light missing in the back there. Sorry, a little nerdy uh, observation there, but it's the kind of thing that, 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 that could be crucial when they try and land this booster. The model here, though, is this is entirely reusable. That's the plan. Both the booster itself can right, land so itself back at the space station, the back, back at the uh, ground station, and Starship, the, booster, the, the spacecraft, the once it's gone into orbit around the Earth, should be able to land itself back on its tail. They're not actually going to perform the landings today. They're splashing down in the ocean. The booster in the Gulf of Mexico Starship in the Indian Ocean, but they're going to go and try and show that they can orientate themselves in that landing position to confirm it. But the real test here, what they didn't manage to achieve in the third test flight, was to show that the Starship can re-enter the Earth's atmosphere in this belly flop position. It was rolling last time, too much heat got around those heat shields, gets up to about 1400 degrees centigrade re-entry, that's hot, hot enough to melt steel, which it's made of, and it came apart. So this time, the real thing they're hoping for is to see that re-entry um, element happen. Already at an altitude of 44 kilometers above the Earth in a matter of two minutes, 20 seconds, which just shows you the power of it. And I mentioned at the start there, Tom, when I was introducing you, two spacecraft in two days, because Boeing had their successful launch yesterday, a bit like this, after several failures. That's right. Boeing um, were, uh, they were an interesting uh, comparison here because they're a direct rival of SpaceX for getting astronauts into space. Right now, a separate SpaceX uh, vehicle called Dragon is the only US-built uh, vehicle capable of taking um, astronauts to the space station. Boeing Starliner, which successfully launched the first time. There, we've got separation. OK, so they've come away. But anyway, that Starliner aircraft made by Boeing is going to the space station today. We'll see that dock later this afternoon. So that's a crucial step. Successful separation. That's where the second test failed. It all blew up at that point. So the booster's now heading back to Earth. In about, where are we? In about a minute's time, the booster should be making its landing demonstration attempt. And now we're waiting for Starship's engines to ignite, which they are. They're lit. So it's boosting itself further into space to go into orbit around the Earth. It's not doing a full orbit. It's just going as far as the Indian Ocean before it then starts to re-enter. Uh, we can see the figures that perhaps you can't see at home, but it's just above 100 kilometres above the Earth now. You can obviously see in that picture on the left the curve of the Earth, the atmosphere, uh, something going on there. I'm not going to try and pretend I know what it is, Tom. Those will be its... The, the, that's the, the boosters. Oh, to orientate it. Exactly. OK. Adjusting its orientation. It looks very stable right now. There's a lot of cheering in my right ear. I'm thinking, in the right-hand picture here, you can see the smoke trail of the booster. I'm wondering if the booster's done well. That's a shielding ring coming away that you need. Oh. Uh, yeah. As we mentioned, this is a That's the hot stage segment being jettisoned, uh, reduce the weight which they the think booster, made it too uh, heavy last heavy time, booster, which is why the booster didn't land successfully. It's gone away. They'll be wanting to see now whether the booster can orientate itself and demonstrate potential reusability.
Um, why we don't have a feed of that, I'm not sure. Maybe they don't want us to watch the, uh, all the embarrassing details. Well, like you say, if it's so competitive at the moment, Tom, perhaps they don't want others to know so what's remember, going on. Unlike NASA, this is not publicly funded. This, although nearly $3 billion of the development budget for this does come from the American taxpayer, they're under a NASA contract. They are a commercial company. They control what we see and what we don't see. Uh, whereas, obviously, with NASA missions, there's a, there's a lot more of a culture of openness in what we see. Um, Even so, this has the feeling, doesn't it, if you're old enough, like I think we both are, of space shuttle launches in the 80s, that zooming into the unknown, the thing coming apart, and hopefully, of course, it didn't always work, sadly to say, but most of the time, the boosters splitting away yep. from the space shuttle and coming back to Earth, and that cheering in ground control as well. There's an excitement about it. There is an excitement about it, and I think what's going to be particularly exciting, I think it's a very ambitious schedule, but if by 2026, the Americans using NASA spacecraft and, and Starship as a partner can get humans back onto the moon, that's the first time that's happened in more than 50 years. Mm. And that will take us into a, an era of space um, exploration that we've, that we've really not seen since our, our parents' generation. So that's, that's very exciting for me, because it's something I've definitely missed out on, and I know you did too. But what's going to be interesting is the production schedule, or the booster, if you see, has orientated itself in the right sort of aspect. I don't think you can see this at home, but it's almost vertical, and it's coming in 58, 57 kilometres above the Earth. So that's looking pretty good. Um, sorry, I interrupted myself there. What SpaceX and Starship are planning to do is make these things on a production line. Yeah. They're going to have rapid deployments, is their expectation, their hope. Um, so it might not just be more excitement, but it might be coming more frequently if, uh, if Starship get their way. Here's the, oh, here's the feed from the booster coming in to land. And this was crucial because, as you said last time, the booster burnt up because it, too much heat was generated. It, it, it also had some problems. It couldn't get fuel to its thrusters and it, it, it couldn't slow itself down. It just basically hit the ocean in a big uh, we'll splash. It's coming right we'll in now. It's only exciting, eight kilometres above. Let's have a listen in here because they are describing yep. right -hand side of you from the what's ship. going on. And you can see those grid fins on your left-hand screen rotating and turning okay. to guide the booster. And there's that landing burn. They're cheering because the engines are working. That's what failed last time. So they've come on as expected. Now so they're softening the oh, There you go. And you can see wow. The there's the water below, and it's hovering. And we have splashed above. down. Yep. And then it's dropping down into the sea. Well, let's leave that there because it's been successful. Cheers at ground control there. Look at them, they're absolutely ecstatic. And look, what do I know, Tom? But certainly to your trained eye, it looked pretty textbook. De demonstrates the potential reusability of that big booster. And we've got another 30 minutes or so before, 25 minutes or so before the space starship starts its re-entry into uh, the Earth's atmosphere.